Ich mache das heute übrigens dann in Englisch, weil wir dann das Video auf Englisch auch haben. Haben Sie schon gedrückt? Genau, steht drauf, Sie zeichnen auf, müsste, müsste aufzeichnen, oben links, die Zeit. Mhm. Okay. Okay, perfekt. So, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our fourth chapter in computational fluid dynamics. Today, I want to show you the Navier-Stokes equations. At first, there is a big question. Yeah? What can we do if the flow is not in a pipe? In the last lectures, you've learned the Bernoulli's law. You have learned something about conservation equations and about meshes. But the flow was always really easy. Yeah? And today we have to have a look a bit deeper and a bit more close on our problem fluid dynamics because the flow is not always in a pipe. Yeah, it, the flow can be in a, in a room, in a three-dimensional area, and then it gets much more difficult. How can we measure or visualize fluid flow? Yeah, of course, Uh, today we deal with computational fluid dynamics, but there's always another possibility. You can build up a model in real. You can make measurements of turbulences and visualize it. For example, here we have a, a background-oriented Schlieren system here. Here you see it's like, a, like a, a nozzle of hot air. And if you look slightly, you can see the turbulence a bit. It's not really good to see here in this picture. It's much better if you uh, refer to this movie on YouTube, then you can see the visualization of, of the fluid flow. Or you can just uh, film with your smartphone the QR code at the, at the corner here. Okay, that's another. Um, way where we want to visualize turbulence. Yeah? Turbulence is difficult to explain. It's, it's a serious problem. Yeah? It influences our results. And what can we do? We can make a CFD simulation. Here you can see um, uh, open foam post-processing of CFD simulation of a flame. And here you can see some pictures of a lighter where I I, yeah, I pushed the lighter, I had a flame, and you can slightly see that the air gets hotter, the density changes, the viscosity changes, and also the diffraction of the light changes, and that's why you can see this turbulence in this fluid flow. Please also refer to the YouTube video by yourself, where, where, I, um, where you can see it in detail, how the fluid flow um, flows. Huh? Okay, that's another picture of a car and a wing. Here at the top you can see um, a, a car model and we made this um, boss simul this boss visualization. So that's not CFD simulation, it's a visualization of gas and you can see um, how the boundary layer and the fluid flow acts on the car and you can also see at the bottom a wing, a NACA profile and you can see um, how fluid flow behaves around the NACA wing. Yeah, that's the last visualization of the turbulence. Here you can see our, yeah, a more easy, it's not a digital filter, it's a more easy optical visualization And you can see how fluid flow acts um, and how, how, how the fluid behaves. Yeah, you can visualize it. Again, this picture here of the wind tunnel, that's also another example where we had this wing. Uh, I already showed you this movie. You can look to the movie by yourself. Again, here we see a wing profile, the angle of attack changes, and you see 
the stall effect and the lift off. OK, so you see the fluid is not the fluid flow is not easy. We have turbulence, we have a lift off and we have. Um, yeah, and we cannot describe this behavior in three dimensional or here in two dimensional only with Bernoulli's law. That is not possible. No, it's too complicated. Here again, we see our yeah, pressure distribution. Yeah, that's something we can't see the pressure distribution here. We can only see the velocity flow and the streamlines. And you, in fact, you can also not measure the velocity here. Yeah, you just see see it as a visualization. And um, how did we get this? lift force and this track force, we get it by the pressure fields. So if if our angle of attack is here, yeah, let's say maybe 5%, uh, 5 degree or so, then the fluid that flows above the wing is much faster because the way here is longer and the fluid has to flow faster over the wing. Below the wing, the fluid is not so fast, uh, it's slower. That means if you remember our weather forecast problem, if you re remember our Bernoulli's law from the last lecture, you have learned if we have high velocities, we also have low pressures. And if we have low velocities, we have high pressures. That means um, in the area of low pressure, we get a force upwards. This is really important. Maybe if you remember your homework from last week, if you would just build your wing in a wrong way, you get a small lift force. And of course, it's most important to get high lift forces to lift up um, the plane um, with less energy. OK, we also have learned about the conflict between Mr. Leonard Euler and Mr. Lacroix. Um, if you see, they have lived, yeah, they, they were famous scientists. Mr. Euler invented a lot of laws for fluid dynamics. And also Mr. Lacroix was a famous scientist in the 18th century, 19th century. And he described, um, yeah, he described all the mathematics in a different way. Yeah, today, if we use ANSYS here, we will only use the mathematics of Mr. Euler. Yeah, we will not use any Lagrangian mathematics. The whole Lagrangian system, the whole simulation setup of Lagrangian mathematics is also suitable. You can use it, for example, if you want to describe particle flows or 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 maybe gasoline, uh, gasoline spray or diesel spray. I've used Lagrangian mathematics a lot when I made design of diesel nozzles and gasoline sprays. But here uh, in this lecture, we will not need this mathematics. Though this is also CFD, you can use this mathematics, you can use it with ANSYS CFX, but we will not do it here in this lecture. We will only deal with Eulerian mathematics. All our systems are Eulerian. No? Though I, I told you often in science there, is, there are conflicts yeah, between famous scientists. Yeah? For example, the conflict of Leonard Euler and Joseph Louis Lacroix was a conflict. A similar conflict was a conflict between Isaac Newton and Leibniz. Yeah, they they um, developed derivations in mathematics and they had a conflict. Yeah, they did use different descriptions. This is the same with Euler and Lagrange. OK, so we will we will use Eulerian mathematics and that will that means we have to do a grid. If you do Lagrangian mathematics, 
you do not need this kind of grid. Yeah? That's a big difference. Um, there is a possibility that you use a mixed system of both, that you have an Eulerian description and additionally a Lagrangian description. Then you can describe, for example, fluid flow of air and the movement of particles inside this air. This is often also important problem, but here in this class we only use grids with Eulerian description. And you see our dinosaur here. Um, you see here um, to describe this complicated mesh, you need tetraedas here, but um, to describe it in a more simple way, I just use a box, yeah, a hexaeda mesh, and there it's more easy to measure the deltas. The same is possible here in this uh, prism or tetraeda cell, but now for us it's too complicated mathematical description, so we just use this delta description. What have we learned last week? We learned about the continuity equations at a volume. Yeah? We have learned we have here this box, we have our deltas, dx is the length, dy is the depth, and dz is the height of the box. And now if we want to calculate this volume, you have to multiply dx times dy times dz. Um, you can also calculate the volume of a pyramid or a tetraeda or a prism cell. It's, it's possible, but it's mathematical more complicated. So if I say it's more complicated mathematical, it, it is also more work for the computer. Okay. Now we want to describe the mass flow. Mass flow enters the volume from the left side here. And mass flow, input mass flow, can be calculated by density times velocity times the area. And the area is here in this case dz times dy. And now the fluid moves through the cell and we can calculate the mass flow that exits the cell. But uh, what I told you before, we have also diffusion effects and we have also viscosity now. We have to take this into account. So not all of the fluid will exit here at the right side. Some parts of the fluid will also exit at the bottom or top or at the side. And this has to be described by the second derivation of the momentum balance. Okay, the second derivation describes how much of the fluid exits at the side of the cell. This can imagine this is important. That's why we need, if you just want to simulate a pipeline, we don't need this information. But if we want to model a wing or an airplane, we need the information how much of the fluid goes to the side. And now, if, we, if you remember our wing, we also have to calculate forces. And that's quite difficult if we don't have, um, if we don't have knowledge about viscosities, about shear stresses, about turbulences. If we want to calculate um, the mass of an element, we need density times yeah times uh, volume that is the mass and now there's a question how can we calculate forces on the walls of the wing okay and there was a really famous person he lived a bit after also please mention the history um, here this really famous scientist mr navia um, developed his theory. He, he also was interested in forces on areas. He was interested in, in these balances. He knew all the work of Mr. Euler and Mr. Lagrange. And then he, he decided how can we calculate 
also forces and viscous effects in our balances. Yeah, because if you look at honey or air or water, they all flow in a different way, and this depends on viscosity. And um, in this time, in the 18th century, uh, French was really um, um, they were in scientific questions really high educated. They had really good scientists. And maybe if you have to Paris, uh, have been to Paris, um, the uh, the French people they all um, have written names of famous scientists here in the Eiffel Tower. If you have the possibility to visit the Eiffel Tower again in future, you can maybe closely look here inside this um, yeah the spaces here. And there you see the name of Mr. Um, Navia. Yeah. But um, Navia Stokes, someone is missing, and that's Mr. George Gabriel Stokes. He lived in England. Uh, a bit later, uh, he didn't look so happy. He was a mathematician and physicist, and he developed nearly the same. Yeah, he also um, was interested in flows. He was interested in viscosities, and he developed the same, more or less, the same law. And so the name of the Navier-Stokes equations were made after both scientists. Okay, and there's a third person I want to mention again. I mentioned him from time to time. It's also a really famous scientist in fluid flow, and that's Mr. Reynolds. Uh, he lived quite later, and he uh, developed the Navier-Stokes equations further, and he described the effects of turbulence. Yeah, he he uh, descri described when is a fluid flow, for example, here around a round body, when is it laminar, and when is it turbulent. And yeah, that's also a number you should not forget. You should know it, and if you deal with CFD, the so-called Reynolds number. If we have Reynolds number smaller than 2300, we have laminar flows. And if we have Reynolds numbers higher, 2300, uh, more, more or less 2320, we get turbulent effects. And to describe this turbulent effects, we also need knowledge about viscosity. Okay. And you will see uh, later if we come to to the airplane model, you will also have a lot of turbulences, and the turbulences always need, mean loose. Yeah. For example, if this is your wing, if your wing is in this direction, and this is now example plate, if you turn it around, yeah, what you see here, here you see slightly swirls. They look really cool, small swirls, but if you turn the plane, you see higher turbulent motion. Okay, and this will cause the so-called track force. Um, if you remember your homework, your simulation of the wing, we had this lift force. This lift force is always positive. You need it to get the plane up. But if you look at the here at this plate, we have an additional force, the so-called track force, and the track force is not good for movement of our airplane. Yeah, the track force, you get higher pressure in front of the plate here, and you get lower pressure behind it. And this is also, uh, if you build up an airplane, you will always have high pressure in the front at the nose and low pressure at the back. And this will also cause um, a force that pushes the airplane backwards. So that's the explanation why the nose of an airplane should always be um, yeah, not, not flat. Uh, it should be more rounded. Yeah, here again is a, is a sketch of this track force. 
if you could imagine we have here a round round body yeah here this is a elliptical body we have here velocity from the front and here we can see our track coefficient and if you make it more lengths more length yeah imagine this is the nose of the airplane if the nose gets higher lengths uh, compared with the with a with this d with the height yeah if this ratio gets better if if the length gets higher compared with the weight here you get lower track forces so if you design the nose of your airplane please always make um yeah not not so so flat noses Here again, the same picture. Track force now over Reynolds number. Yeah, here we have over length height ratio, but you can also make this plot over Reynolds number. More or less, Reynolds number is um, as comparable with the velocity of the air times the viscosity, and you have your track coefficient again. Yeah, and you can see it over the Reynolds number that if you have higher Reynolds numbers, you get lower track coefficients for round plane. Um, there's a, a fitting here from this was first to, um, observed by Mr. Stokes. Yeah, you can have CD is 20, 24 divided by Reynolds for a ball. Now yeah, this is, um, yeah, a, a, a more or less a simplified equation, but you can imagine if you make a CFD of this detailed geometry, you get a much more detailed track coefficient. Yeah, this is just just thumb number. Okay, Mr. Martin, I think stops the video now.